This, my dear creator friends, is the ASUS VivoBook Pro 16X. And if you are into anything, even remotely relating to content creation, you should definitely keep this puppy in mind when shopping for your next notebook. The VivoBook series primarily covers the entry-level to mid-range segment in ASUS's lineup. And the Pro 16X might look like it's made to fit within that particular bracket, but at closer inspection it borrows quite a few things from its much more premium ZenBook and even ProArt products. And I would even say it does so in all the right places, but without the crazy price tags of its more luxurious siblings. So how about you get yourself some coffee and we see what this 16 inch can deliver for all of your work, productivity and entertainment needs. Before we get into the juicy details, let's start with the specs, shall we? In the CPU department, ASUS went all in and stuffed Intel's top dog, the i9-3980HX in the VivoBook. This absolute unit of a processor is aided by an RTX 4060 running at up to 140 watts, at least on paper, but more on that later. And in addition, you get 32 gigs of DDR5 4800 RAM and a 1 terabyte SSD. As with most of the VivoBook lineup, the 16 inch comes with an OLED, and the panel in the Pro 16X is most likely the same as we have already seen in the much more expensive StudioBook and ZenBook variants. And by the way, we are currently working on the ZenBook Pro 16X review, and you should definitely stay tuned for that one, since the premium product of the VivoBook comes with a freaking 4080. This might also be the perfect opportunity to talk about the main and glaring differences between this one and the more higher end variants in ASUS's lineup, which mostly comes down to build quality. While both the ZenBook and the StudioBook come with all metal or magnesium alloy chassis, this one right here is mainly made from plastic, apart from the display lid. It also does not look quite as classy as its siblings, and while I personally do not mind the bright orange accent colors, I am not so sure about the differently colored keycaps. Build quality is still very good, and the used materials do not feel cheap at all. Jesse rigidity is also well within margin given the plastic deck and overall the VivoBook is a somewhat clean and subtle looking notebook for a wide range of applications. That said, while the display lid shows only minimal flex, the hinges are not doing the best job from preventing screen wobble during intense typing or gaming sessions. The port arrangement also does not leave a lot of room for criticism. And on the left you get your power connector, gigabit ethernet, a USB-A and a full-size SD card reader with decent transfer rates. On the opposite side you get an additional USB-A, two Thunderbolt 4s, HDMI 2.1 and your audio combo jack. Again, it's a solid layout, but we would have wished that ASUS would upgrade to a faster 2.5 gigabit ethernet port and the USB-As are also just the slower 5 gigabit variants. For your next wireless game or file downloads, the VivoBook offers solid Wi-Fi transfer rates and the webcam does its job without the best nor the worst image we came across this year so far. In the maintenance department, the 16 inch offers easy access to a pair of SODIMs and NVMe slots, and the Wi-Fi card is slotted as well. Regarding inputs, the VivoBook continues the trend of an average but solid impression. The keyboard offers a decent amount of travel, a clean layout even though the number pad is a little squished to fit the chassis, and a decent pressure point with average tactility. The whole assembly does feel a little soft because of the plastic deck, but overall you will get used to this one pretty quickly. The large touchpad follows along the same line and did work without a hitch during our testing and comes with the same touch dial as for example the ZenBook Pro 14 we tested a while back. You probably cannot stand anymore to hear me go on and on on how much I love OLED displays, but please bear with me once more. The 120Hz panel in this one looks simply gorgeous, even though it comes with these same overall drawbacks common to all OLED screens for now being PWM at 120Hz in this case and the relatively low average brightness. Contrast and color gamut coverage are excellent though and factory calibration was spot on as well, making the VivoBook well suited for all sorts of photo or video editing shenanigans. In typical ASUS fashion, they also provide some additional color profiles for workflows that need finer control in this regard. Gaming on this panel is also a pure joy with the snappy refresh rate and 
insane and unmatched response times. In the performance department, the VivoBook might not quite be able to keep up with other i9 3980HX equipped notebooks. But when compared to the competition in similar form factors, well, you will be hard pressed to find a faster notebook within this class. In our CPU performance rating, the 16 incher can easily outrun both the Intel Age and Ryzen 7 CPUs, and only has to yield to proper desktop class type of high end gaming notebooks. System performance measured with PCMark on the other hand reveals only average results. Even though the VivoBook is a very, very snappy system in our testing and is well suited for all sorts of different use cases. The drive used by ASUS also does not quite get the high-end treatment and while transfer rates should be fast enough for almost anything you can come up with, it's definitely also not the fastest we came across in 2023. The RTX 4680 Pro 16X also delivers as expected and performs around the efficiency optimum for the mid-range NVIDIA card at around 100 watts. In both our content creation tests as well as our 1080p gaming rating, the VivoBook is therefore offering not a class leading but still a very solid experience, really making it a jack of all trades for someone looking for a reliable work and play companion. Please enjoy our benchmarks and if you want to get deeper into our test results, please feel free to head on over to our written review. I would also kindly ask you to hit that like and subscribe button as well if you haven't already. It really means a lot to us. When properly pushed with combined CPU and GPU loads, the VivoBook can definitely make quite a bit of noise. And you should definitely have your headset at the ready for those occasions. But given that performance takes only a minimal hit when utilizing the excellent standard mode, we simply can't think of too many situations where you would really need the marginal performance uplift given the very noisy drawbacks. As always, we took some noise samples for you, so you can get an idea of what to expect. And for much more insight into our stress test and temperature testing, please once more check out our article on the website. Away from the wall, the VivoBook also offers nothing to write home about. Even though we think 6.5 hours in our Wi Fi test with the screen set to 150 nits is still alright for the performance numbers you get in return. Alright, folks, so let's wrap this up for today. The VivoBook might not offer the same high end build quality and materials like its ZenBook or Pro Art cousins, but given the reduced price point and still very potent core components, that might exactly be the right compromise to be made. With stellar CPU performance, an amazing screen, lots of connection options and a solidly performing RTX 4060, you got all the right ingredients for a great multi-purpose notebook that does not come with an as eye-watering price tag as the before mentioned alternatives. But please folks, let me know what you think about this one in the comments below. This shall be it for today. Thanks a ton for watching. Please leave your like and sub on your way out. My name is Alex, you have been fantastic and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.